All right, now, hello, everybody. I am Zakaria the Ghostwriter. Today, I was watching episode five of Red Ink. What an episode. The episode was mind-blowing. As you see Lucy Kambule's picture, she was shocked to see someone who looked exactly like the butcher, Napoleon Dengizuayo. She later found out that that gentleman is Sfiso, Napoleon's twin brother. It was the first time they revealed Sfiso. Remember on the previous episode, Napoleon Dengizuayo asked Lucy to go and search for his brother simply because of his no longer visiting him. Only to find out that there were people who break into his house and they wanted to kill Sfiso and that's why Sfiso ran away. And now they've shown us Sfiso and Sfiso came to warn Lucy not to continue with the story that she's writing. He said to her, stop writing that book because of it's going to bring a lot of problems in your life. Stop it because of there are so many people who are connected to Napoleon, the butcher story. Napoleon Ding Swayo was not doing things on his own. There are so many top people who are connected, politicians to be specific. And it turned out that Sfiso is working with KK Maboy, the gentleman who is also working with Peter Maquarela. Remember Peter Maquarela, he is the producer at this um, TV show called The Bride. Now, this gentleman by the name of KK he is well connected. He's connected with politicians. He's a top businessman. And it turned out that he has two IT companies with Sfiso Dingiswayo. Now, while Sfiso is busy talking to Lucy, then he saw somebody and he decided to get out of the club as soon as possible. Because he knew that once certain people see him, they will know exactly where he is. And remember, KK, he is connected with the gentleman who just want to become the MEC, he goes by the name of Kofi Mutawung. Kofi Mutawung is competing with Shadrek, who is the current mayor. Now, the story is written so well. On the previous episode, Shadrek had a bad publicity because of he was seen with a lady who was wearing a miniskirt and they set the mayor with the prostitute. It was a bad publicity and they had to do everything in their power to connect with you know, Pat, Patricia, so that they can work on that story. And Lucy turned the story around by calling guys like Gariso so that they can change that headline. And now Shadrack, you know, was saved by that. His career was saved simply because of now Lucy did her magic. Then we later saw Lucy telling Shadrack that let's find some dirt on coffee and publish the story about Kofi so that Kofi will also lose supporters. But Shadrach didn't want that. He said, I don't want to be that type of a mayor. But now what happened is Kofi decided to use KK to get information from Lucy. He wanted to know everything about Lucy, her routine. What does she do before she brush her teeth? Where does she go? What does she do in her life? Now, the only way to get into Lucy's life is by using the friend by the name of Fundi. Now, when he is dating Fundi, he is blessing Fundi with gifts. Now, Fundi keeps on sharing more about Lucy. Now, he can get that information and take it back to his boss, who goes by the name of Kofi Mutawu. And look at how the political game is played. It is played so well. Now, KK is giving Fundi all the things that she wants. Fundi wants to be an actor. She wants to be an actress. She want to be on TV. Now, there is a TV show called The Bride. And KK tells Fundi that he knows Peter Maquarela, who is the producer. I can make things happen to the audition. And he came through, he delivered, she went to the audition, and she got the role. After she got the role, he invited her to a place where they will go and have fun. I call it the dance. Obviously, it's foreplay, you know, the Fifty Shades of Grey. You know, they are using all the ropes and all the things that they can use in the bedroom but she didn't know that she was about to be killed. Now, this guy has this fetish of wanting, you know, the woman to be tied up on the bed so that he can have total control. And she gave him that because she was like, how can I thank this guy who made the impossible possible? I struggled a lot to be on TV and he just made one phone call. And here I am. I got the gig. On the other side, things were happening between Lucy and Gariso. 
Lucy decided to go and see Gariso so that she can get more information about Sfiso Tingizwayo. And the way they recorded that scene, it was nicely done because they were also doing the dance. While she was riding, the woman on top, as they say, the cowgirl, as they say, she started asking questions. She's a journalist. She's doing her job while she's also doing her job. Then she wanted to know about Kofi Mutau. What do you know about the guy? Because she is trying to find more debt from the politicians so that she could also ruin his reputation. Now, KG came through. KG told her that he knows that, you know, Kofi is dirty. And he knows that Kofi is dating this lady by the name of Rachel Ramasedi. She is Miss S.A. Runner-Up. Now, he's having an affair. He is not clean. So they're doing everything in their power to dig the dead so that they can also give him bad publicity. Now, back where she's working in the PR, you know, there is a beautiful lady by the name of Nelly Swa. She is a receptionist. She is digging deep. And she also find out that Mr. Mutaung is connected with the Zamazamas. So all these things, all this information is coming out. But Lucy had to go and do the dance with KG so that KG can keep digging further. And KG also find out that Sfiso Tengizuayo and KK have two IT companies. Now, after she got that information, she decided to drive to Fundi's house because she's trying to call her, but she's not, you know, picking up her calls. She understood that if this guy, KK, is connected with Sfiso, and he is not even telling Fundi about his businesses with Sfiso. That means he is working with Sfiso, including Napoleon Dingiswayo. That means he's dangerous. That means he's a serial killer also. Now, one thing I like about this TV show, they are showing you that these guys who are committing all these crazy things that you cannot even think about, they are intelligent. They are super, super smart. They understand human brains more than an ordinary citizen who just go to 9 to 5. Before he can go to commit murder, before he can go to do what he wants to do to Fundi, he's making a phone call to who? To Lucy. So that Lucy can be distracted. Look at what he does. He called Lucy and he said, listen Lucy, I got this number from your friend Fundi. And Fundi told me that you are busy talking to Napoleon Dingiswayo and you are writing a book about Napoleon Dingiswayo. Do you have a publisher? Lucy said, I don't have a publisher. He said, I know a top publisher and I can speak on the publisher on your behalf. Now, Lucy was going to struggle to get a publisher who will publish a story. And remember, Lucy is struggling right now. She is renting at this uh, gentleman's house, Brian. Obviously, she lost, you know, her house. Obviously, her marriage is falling apart. Obviously, she's desperately, you know, looking for money. And this guy said, you know, I will connect you with the publisher. And she's been saying, if I write this book, I know the publisher can give me an advance. And in that way, I can get myself back to where I was before. Now, he is bringing the solution to Lucy. And he said to Lucy, I will send you the details of the publisher. Lucy goes to see the publisher. And when she arrived to this publishing house is called Indre Publishing House. She met the publisher who welcomed her. The publisher made her feel at home. Obviously, she has to, you know, pitch her book. She has to show him that she is a good writer. The publisher just looked at, you know, a few pages. He was just browsing. And he said, oh, it's the story about the butcher. You know, if I can give you my two cents, you know, crime story has to sell back in the days. It was a thing, but not anymore. You know, people are no longer watching that. People are no longer interested in seeing, you know, a guy who is killing women. You know, I was talking to KK. And KK, he's a brilliant guy. That's why he recommended you, you know, to me. And I gave you this meeting because of I know that there is something special there. You know, I was told that you just recently divorced. And obviously, you are a single mother. And people want to see some feel-good you know, TV shows, they want to read some feel-good stories. How about maybe I made an offer whereby you can write another book? You are a single woman. People would love to see 
a story about a single woman in her 30s, you know, who is juggling everything. You know, she is waking. Next time she's not waking. Next time she's a spin doctor. You know, she is a great writer. She's a great journalist. It will give them motivation. Women will be happy to read the story about another woman who is struggling, who is juggling everything, who is doing everything in her power to make sure that she take care of her son. They will feel motivated and they will know that it is possible. If you can do it, they can also do it. And as I'm speaking with you right now, I can see it becoming the bestseller. And we can have a spin-off, a TV show spin-off. It can be a great, great TV show. It can be called The Real Single Moms of Johannesburg. You know, he was selling her that idea. And when he was doing that, I understood that he's connected with politicians. And he said, I'm willing to make an offer. How about I give you 200K in advance? That's exactly what she wanted, to write a book about Napoleon, hoping that a good publisher will give her an advance so that she can turn her life around. Now, they are shifting her from writing Napoleon Dingeswayo's book because of it will reveal so many secrets. Obviously, she will want to know about his childhood, and that means he must tell her about the brothers Fiso, and he must tell her about, you know, his parents. And remember, on the previous episode, we had Napoleon Dingiswayo talking about the sponsor when he was talking to Davi. And he was like saying, why the sponsor is not helping me? Who is the sponsor? The sponsor is the person who is giving KK money. And KK can easily talk to the publishers so that the publishers can make things happen. The publisher has 200K, which he will get from this gentleman by the name of Kofi Mutau. Kofi Mutahung makes his money simply because of his Zamazamas who are working on his behalf. And he's also connected with the men in Saudi. They are the Saudi boys who are also giving him money. So he is a politician who is corrupt. And he is doing everything in his power to get into that position. He knows that once he gets there, he is going to divide all the tenders and stuff with his people. Now, they are revealing all of those things on this episode 5. Now, after she got that offer of 200K, she was so excited. And she felt like, you know what? I can be on the right path and I can make a lot of money because of Sfiso is not far from me and I think Sfiso is dangerous. Now, she made a phone call and she spoke with Davi. Davi is the prison warder. And she said she wanted to see Napoleon Dingeswayo. Now, she met with him and this time now is different. This time she has makeup. This time she's wearing her weave. This time she is wearing nice. And she is there because she wants to tell him like, look, you don't want to cooperate with me. And I feel like, you know what? You are playing with me. You don't want to give me the stories. I met your brother who is Sfiso. And Sfiso told me that I should stop writing the book. And I think Sfiso is right. Simply because of you also told me that you know, he knows that Pat, Patricia was not killed by the boyfriend's help. He knows who killed Patricia. Now, right there, it takes me back to when Napoleon said, when I kill my victims, I don't remember seeing blood. And Patricia, when she was killed, there was blood everywhere in the office. That means the person who used to go after Napoleon when he kills his people, he used to go there and make sure that there is blood everywhere. Now, we start asking ourselves questions if maybe it's Fiso who was, you know, finishing what the brother started. Or maybe it's somebody who is also under the umbrella of Mr. Kofi Mutau doing the killing since Fiso is in jail now. Clearly, there is a killer out there. Maybe KK is the killer. We already saw some signs of him trying to kill Fundi. Now, while they were busy talking, she said, I want to ask you something. I know that you and Sfiso, you were in orphanage, and I know that there was this lady by the name of Harriet Kuzwayo. She died. She just disappeared. Nobody knows what happened to her. Her body has never been found. And she asked if that lady was his first victim. And he replied by saying, if you know... Mrs. Kuzwayo, you'll know that that's not Pinky. Obviously, remember, Pinky is the first victim, is the first woman that he killed. And she put two plus two together 
And she said, yes, I saw the picture. I saw you with your brother's fiso. And obviously that means you were not alone. That means somebody helped you to get rid of her body. That means someone very close to you was helping you to kill her since you are saying you hated her more than your mom. And you are not happy about it because of you were with somebody and the job was not clean. If you were alone, the job was going to be clean. It was going to be perfect. And that's why this is bothering you. Now, only that scene revealed that the twin brothers has been doing the same thing. They are both killers. And since he's caught, he is worried about his brother. So the more they see each other is the more they plan things together. The more he visit and the more they work on what they can do, who is the next victim, how much money are they going to get from you know, their dirty politicians or the funders, the sponsors, as they call them, sponsors. And that's how they've been surviving by going out there and doing the dirty job for politicians. And that's when she told him that, you know, I have an offer. They want to give me money and I think I should write the other book and forget about your book simply because of you don't want to cooperate. You are telling me to keep searching for your brother and you don't want to give me anything. And that's when he, he was he was shattered. You know, he didn't know what to do. He kept begging her, Makambuli, please don't leave me. Please don't leave me. You know, and he just praised her. You know, he told her that she is beautiful. She is like an angel. Because of this time, she got her makeup on. She got her weave on. She is looking good. You know, she made sure that, you know, she looked her best. And now this woman who is he is drawn to, she is also leaving him the same way he was left by his mom the same way maybe his aunties left him you know this gentleman he still have childhood issues whereby he he doesn't do well when he is rejected it shows that he really loves women but when women are treating him bad you know that makes him feel the way he feels and he feels like certain women don't deserve to be around simply because of they don't treat children well the story is written so well, guys. This is YouTube. I'm breaking down the story. But you can imagine a young man who really loves his mom, a young man who really loves, you know, the person who he looks at her, thinks she's an angel. Maybe she was addicted, you know, to substances or she was doing drugs or alcohol and she neglected them. In other ways, they got into this orphan age and they were taken care by the name of this woman, by the name of Harriet Kuzuayo, and she never showed them love. And that's why he hated the lady. He never liked the lady. And now when he come across ladies that he likes and they're behaving how they behave, you know, they, they trigger that thing. And we look at him as somebody who is very impatient. Because when you look at, you know, Busi, the person that she, 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 she died on the first episode, during 2010, you know, everything was well. He invited her, you know, he was talking about the Bible, but all of a sudden, you know, she was wearing a mini skirt and she wanted to vibe and she didn't like gospel and he got irritated and killed her. You know, they are showing us some of the symptoms because we most of the time, you know, see the serial killers, but we don't know how they think and we don't know what triggers them. That's why this TV show is the best. Now he's begging her. He doesn't want her to leave, but she left. Why? Because of she think about the 200K that she was promised. Now, Napoleon, he is exposing the politicians because of they betrayed him. They told him that they will protect him. They told him that they will do everything in their power to make sure that he get out of jail. And remember, they moved him to a prison where he was supposed to be killed by bone. And he defended himself. And those guys, they said, tonight is your night. You are going to meet your angels. That means the sponsors are the ones who are also sending the word in prison so that Napoleon can be killed. Now he knows that the sponsors are betraying him because of the sponsors cannot take him out. Now he is retaliating by using Lucy Kambule with the book. When Lucy is writing the book, that book will be published and they will be exposed and they will do everything in their power to make sure that Lucy doesn't publish the book. They rather give Lucy money. That's why he is begging her. But she doesn't see that. But she later on find out that KK is working with Sfiso, and Sfiso is the twin brother of Napoleon, and that means whoever gave KK money, that means that person is behind the whole thing of, you know, Pat being killed and other people being killed.
Now, the twist and turn of the stories are amazing. You have to follow. Now, when Lucy go back to her company right now, because she has 75% of publicist, she get bad news from Neliswa. Neliswa is telling Lucy that, look, we have bad news. Three media companies already published the story of Shadrach's child who goes by the name of Kumbani. Kumbani is doing yaupe, he is doing drugs, and the story is already out there. And publicist was supposed to be there to protect the image of Mr. Shadrach. Now, it shows that Mr. Kofi Motawung is playing dirty. He is also using the child so that he can kill Mr. Shadrach's reputation. He just wants to destroy Mr. Shadrach's political career by putting all this negative publicity. Now, Lucy feels like she failed Mr. Shadrach. And, you know, she said she will call him only to be told that, you know, he's on his way alongside, you know, his son, Kumbani. Now, while they were busy talking, that's when Shadrach apologized. And he said, you were right when you told me that, you know, Kofi will retaliate. Kofi will use something against me so that, you know, he will win this election. We were supposed to find something which is dirty about him and publish it. You were right about it. Now he's starting to realize that now. Now after they left, Lucy decided to go back to her office so that she can start working on finding some debt, only to find out that there is a paper envelope which is there with the paper which has the message which says, stop talking to Napoleon. If you don't, you will regret this forever. Now that's a threat. It shows that there is somebody who can get access to the building and that person knows exactly where her office is and that's why that person can drop that note. And she realized that her life is in danger. Now that's part episode 5 of Red Ink. And also we have seen that, you know, Gary is trying everything in his power to get back with Lucy Kambule and we saw when he was calling her apologizing and she said, you know what, I don't want to start my day with the negative energy. Obviously, she's dating KG now. She is no longer single. She's no longer married to him, although they didn't go the divorce, you know, a route whereby they have to sign papers. But I, I loved when she told him that, listen, Kaya will sleep here tonight. I will go and fetch him at school. And Kaya was not happy about it. Kaya wanted to know more about, you know, why does the mom not go back home? And she has to come clean and tell Kaya that, look, parents sometimes do separate. I'm no longer going back to that house. Me and your dad, we are no longer together. But that doesn't mean that we don't love you anymore. We don't love you less. We still love you. That simply means that you have two homes. You can either come here, this is your home, or you can go to your father's house. That's your home. So you need to understand what is going on because this shouldn't affect you, you know, at school. You know, children need to be told about these things so that they will find it easy. They will understand that, you know, parents sometimes they do separate. And when they separate, you know, there are certain things which go on, but those things doesn't even affect them. You know, parents have to be matured to make sure that they deal with those things and make sure that their kids are always safe and they can always do best at school. And, you know, their problems shouldn't affect their child. You know, I just love how clean she was. And I just love how she's talking to him in a way that you will understand. And later on, we have seen them doing what they normally do before the young men will go to sleep. They will always read books for him, story time, before the gentleman will go to bed. And, and also the father, he is doing the same thing. When Kaya goes home, you know, he read bedtime stories for Kaya. They keep the same ritual. They keep the same family thing so that the young men will grow up knowing that this is how things are done at home. I read stories every day before i go to sleep guys i appreciate you guys showing me love and support i just wanted to speak about this you know because this is a great tv show i like it simply because of in south africa man we are dealing with a lot and in most cases we don't know what triggers these people who commit these crimes and what can we do to identify when people are going to do certain things and when they show us the guy like kk he got money but you don't know where he get his money so they are showing our young sisters that don't just fall for a gentleman who just come out of nowhere and he is blessing you with a lot of money and you don't even know how he get his money. That person might be doing some dirty stuff 
and you love that person, you trust that person simply because of the person gives you money. That means you're selling your soul for the highest bidder. And that's dangerous because everything comes with a price. People don't just do nicer things to you. They do things expecting something in return. And if you take that, be ready for consequences. Thank you.